I've got a contrarian approach to content marketing that may be of interest to you if you're interested in long-term profitable customers who pay out at a higher value than the typical uh, advertising revenue from YouTube or, or subscription services. I'm Justin Hit with Ad Briefings Copywriting Tips. If you're writing copy for clients, if you're writing content for clients, understand this unique strategy or approach that has worked since the days of article marketing and will continue to work forever to come. First off, some background. Uh, I'm Justin Hit with Ad Briefings Copywriting Tips, and I've studied under Dan Kennedy uh, all kinds of Melvin Powers, all kinds of old mail order people. And the thing that worked in the mail order world was to write evergreen content, sell it tied into current affairs, but the content itself works forever, and focus on the entry level, the getting started elements of what a client needs to solve a problem. Now, let me break this down for you because it's a powerful strategy. It works whether you're writing articles, your content marketing, your sending direct mail, it doesn't really matter. And there's this whole long list of people, Jim Straw, for example, um, Frank Kern, um, there's all kinds of historical people. I don't have a list in front of me, but here's what, here's what works. First off, human behavior doesn't change. The how people act it 100 years ago is the same as how they're going to act today. Even though all this cancel culture makes you think people are acting differently, there have been different types of cancel culture in the past. There have been different types of identity movements. There have been different types of political or cultural movements forever. So what you want to do is you want to listen to old speeches. You want to listen to Old presentations, sales presentations. So think about the old MLM or multi-level marketing where they would go to a city and they would do a presentation. Jim Rohn comes from this world. Brian Tracy comes from this world. And they would speak to a group of people that were a general audience and they'd have to call out the individuals in that audience. They'd have to call out the problem, why the problem is important to fix. What types of people are impacted by the problem? How some people have approached the problem and made mistakes? What kind of mistakes have people made and how hard, what kind of horrible things have happened? What kind of success have, has people have that they followed the system? All of that content, whether you're listening to it now or you're listening to it then, is relevant. It's like Napoleon Hill's book. It was written 1930s, 1940s, still relevant today. Uh, there's all kinds of content like this. Now, I'm not saying you copy this content. I'm saying you mon- you monetize the style of the content by setting up a situation where the person in the audience raises their hand and says, I'm interested in more information. So rather than taking them on the journey with educational content, which you'll see very often on YouTube, that teaches somebody how to do something, you're expressing to them why it's important to do the thing, what it is that they're going to do at a high level, and where can they go to get more information. Now, I've written manuals on article marketing. I've written you know, how to spin articles, how to write stories, how to compile all those articles together to create a report, how to use that report as a sales letter and put it in a, in a, in a multi-step campaign. All of that is useful, but what it really taught me is that the same topics over and over and over again are compelling to audiences that have money. Now, this is this is important. You can teach people how to make money in a YouTube video, 30, 40-minute video. They're not going to actually do it. The platform itself is consumption-oriented, so they're going to watch one video, then they're going to watch another video, and then an hour later, they're going to forget they even saw your video. Same thing with articles. You have to have a hook in the content that gets them to raise their hand to get additional information. Now, I don't always do this well. My main hook is for you to write and ask your questions, to visit the website, go to the contact page, ask the right, ask questions. I'll respond with answers to the questions. I'll create new content around the questions that are written. And then ultimately, if someone asks a question that's related to a product that I have, I'll send them a special report which I sell otherwise on my website. I send them the report, usually in a digital format, 
It just really depends on the individual. And I'll say, hey, this might be of help to you. Hey, thanks for asking the question. Here's three things you want to consider. And by the way, this report on this page has something that's relevant to your situation. They'll read the whole report because they, again, they had to raise their hand. They didn't just click something else. They had to go to a web page. They had to go to the contact page. They had to write me. Now, by the way, that reduces the number of people who contact me, but it's a very beneficial method uh, because if you're a larger corporation, you may not want to handle every lead. Uh, If you're a small business, you definitely don't want to handle every lead. So you offer something. Now, what else can you offer? So in your presentation, you can offer a free report. You can offer a copy of your book. You can offer a initial consultation. Now, the initial consultation implies some type of commitment, and it wouldn't be immediate. So that's not as good when you're on a channel where uh, people click video to video or they read article after article after article where they're searching. A free consultation might be better or an initial consultation might be better in your email newsletter where you've captured the individual. So again, I'm going to write evergreen content that speaks to the newbie who's just getting started searching for answers about a particular problem, but I'm not going to write to solve the problem. I want them to fully understand that problem before they solve it. So right now you're writing content. The content may not get traction. The content's going into an environment where there are billions of pieces of content. Think about there are more more videos uploaded every day than so the duration of all the videos uploaded every day is more time than has been on this planet for people to interact. So the, the, there's no way all the content is going to get consumed. So you get somebody to see the content, entice them. You can go through an AIDA, attention, interest, desire, action, but that action has got to get them out of the platform they're in and get them on your mailing list so that you can follow up. You want to reach out with content to individuals who are going to be able to focus on that content. So an article written for your website may not work. It may not do anything because nobody's ever looked at it. But that same article in the format of a letter sent directly to prospects may get read and get them to raise their hand for additional information. I want you to understand the the approach doesn't change But you have to get the other person's attention. You have to be able to deliver something that is interesting. Giving someone a step-by-step approach to solve a problem is not as interesting as helping them explore the problem and understand at a high level what they need to do and then leave them with the question to contact you for additional information. And here's why. If you give them 12 steps they need to take to solve a problem and you go over all the details of the different steps and it's an instructional video, the majority of the people who see that video are going to, they're going to find some trigger that says to them, this is not the problem I have. They might also say that these are too many steps. They might say, well, yeah, that's all good, but I don't really need to solve this problem. The type of content that, that I recommend you write is going to help the individual see how important it is to solve this problem. So if I was trying to sell you on content marketing, so I have a report called Content Marketing Systems. I use it with clients. If I was going to do a three-day course on that, and I was going to show you the different types of content, and I was going to show you how to write content, and I was going to show you how to recycle content, digest sales letters into into content for lead generation, I was going to show you the two-step sales funnel. If I teach all of that on a free podcast, nobody's going to use any of it. But it's not sufficient to help you understand the value of having these insights. So the public content is going to say, hey, look, have you been writing content for your blog or website and not getting any traffic? Because people want that traffic. And then I would, I'd flip it. I understand a lot of people want traffic, but what's most important is leads and sales, and here's why. You could have thousands of articles on your website, but if nobody ever reads those articles, and then if those people who read those articles never ask for additional information, then it's like a fart in the wind. You'll smell it for a little bit, and then they'll all go away. See, that you can add some interest to it. You could also say, hey, look, you might have a lot of content today, but as soon as the search engine changes their algorithm, you're not going to have the traffic that you have. But worse, you won't have the leads you could have had if you approached that content differently. 
See, that's about setting up the pain. Now, you know how painful it is to have to write a bunch of content that nobody ever looks at, except when you're a copywriter, if you're writing a bunch of content, you get paid for the content. So there is an incentive to write content that satisfies the customer, but doesn't necessarily get results. Now, remember, I advocate you doing things that get you repeat business. So I recommend, again, evergreen content that works as well today as it does 10 years from now, as it would 10 years ago. And that type of content is about building up the pain, helping the reader recognize the pain and helping them see themselves as someone who needs additional help and to contact you or contact your client for that help that they need. Now, again, you can give them the help in the form of a long form sales letter. You can give them the the form of the instructional video. And by the way, I have nothing against the instructional videos, but what I don't understand is how come somebody will write, they'll do a beautiful one hour, two hour documentary style, detailed training video, put it up on a free website, and then they have no idea who's interested in watching the video. Sure, you can see the analytics and see the drop off and stuff, but wouldn't it be better to produce five or 10 short form on specific topics for specific audiences and the answer to the question is what to do of the question what to do next is to order or to visit or to opt in to see the long two hour video you would gain a captive visitor so they go generate you generate a lead they go to a website they fill in the information the thank you page shows them the video it's the same video you might have given them for free but there you now know who they are and they have no distractions so it's just the video there's not a video and then a bar down the side that has 10 more videos on the same topic it's the one video they watch the video and then at the bottom of that page it's that next action what we're really doing and what always works is to chain the interactions short form content or even long form content that does the what and the why about the problem that viewer wants to solve It ends with or includes along the way some kind of bounce back to give them something that moves them towards solving the problem. But whatever you give them has a hook in it to offer a service solution. Some of the benefits of this is that the your competitors can't see the offer because the offer is hidden behind an opt-in. And because you have the opt-in, you can follow up on that individual. Do you see how this works? You can follow up on that individual. And then as you build a mailing list, you don't need to produce as much content in the public. That's fewer blog articles, fewer podcasts, fewer uh, you know videos. And then things start getting structured better because you're driving into a specific offer. What do I mean by structured better? A lot of folks are writing content just to write the content. They believe they need more content on their website to get more visitors. They say, oh, I got 100 articles and that gets me 1,000 visitors a day. And so if I had 200 articles, I'd have 2,000 visitors a day. That's not how the math works. So understanding that the right kind of content is important. The right kind of content for the customer journey is important. And ultimately, content that you can write once and profit from many times is important. Now, again, I understand the conflict where you want to write content every month for a client. And if you wrote them something evergreen that they could use over and over again, that means less revenue for you as a copywriter or a marketer. That's a very shallow place to think about it. You don't want to write more copy. You want more profitable copy. And then you want some kind of royalty agreement on the back end or be able to pay charge more. So you write one piece of copy and get paid as much as you would get paid for 10 pieces of copy and you do the work once and then you get paid over and over because the customer wants to do the next thing because they see the results that you delivered again those results when it comes to content marketing or article marketing or whatever they're going to call it next engagement marketing i don't know what the hell they're going to call it next i've been in this world long enough i've looked at the historical figures i have gotten books uh so the uh Uh, there's something, The Laws of Advertising uh, by Henry S. Bunting. That book is from 1918 and it describes things today that gurus are popping out and saying are brand new. No, what works, works. 
what worked in the 1800s when they had to send – you had to put an article in a newspaper and then somebody had to, to send a letter to a, a postal box and somebody had to send a letter back and everything was really slow. It all works today and it can work better because you have that interaction. But that interaction also distracts from the results because there are a lot of choices that the end user has or the, the – the prospect has the distract. So again, let's wrap this up really tight. The key here is evergreen content that's designed to engage a behavior. And that behavior captures enough information about the individual so that you can follow up with another piece of content that engages the next behavior as the prospect moves closer to a purchase engagement. And yes, while you can get paid more for writing 10 articles, it seems that way because you're, you know, you're going to charge $100 per article. I would prefer you to have uh, campaigns and content that gets results so that you can write one article and get $1,000 or two articles and get $10,000. Do you see where I'm coming from here? It's about building up the need and the desire early in the relationship while cultivating a relationship by ident- helping the person self-identify as interested in the topic, interested in the benefit, interested in the results, and ultimately gets involved with what, either what you've got to offer or what your client's got to offer. I'm Justin Hitt with Ad Briefings Copywriting Tips. If you've got any questions about what I've covered here today, especially if it's about content marketing or article marketing, contact my offices, visit www.adbriefings.co.uk. Go to the contact page. This is my filter because if you can't click on the contact page, then you won't be able to follow instructions. Go find my address. Go find my fax number. Send me a note asking your questions. And you know what I will do is I'll go dig into that article marketing program. I'll go dig into that content marketing program and I will extract what is relevant to your specific need and then send that over to you so you can get started today writing evergreen content. Again, ad briefings is about doing the work once and getting paid many times. It's about serving clients and growing your clients so that you can get to a level where you don't have to do 10 articles to make your money. You could do one. You could write a sales letter and two articles and get paid way more than you were, you're getting paid right now. It's not just about what you get paid. It's about uh, you know that repeat customer business, that customer relationship. But it comes from evergreen materials that set up the value of what you've got, the, the benefits to what you've got, and then gets that lead. So now you can follow up with somebody outside of the mediums, outside of the YouTubes, outside of the Twitters, outside of your blog posts, and you'll end up doing less work. Now, whether you're doing it for yourself or you're doing it for your client, this works. And I'd love to hear about your successes and I'd love to hear your questions. Thanks for being a part of what we do here. If I didn't have an audience, this wouldn't be worth doing. I want to thank you for your time and interest. I'm Justin Hitt with Ad Briefings Copywriting Tips.